The following game features explicit language. Viewer discretion is advised. Ugh, I'm so bored. Wish I hadn't given that dude my book. I never even caught his name. That was pretty rude of me, actually. I should have asked. Maybe I'll go find him. So with that straightforward but presumably unachievable goal, so opens the final part of the Charnel House trilogy. So now that we got freedom of movement, let's use it to go ahead and talk to Dawn. Because that dude appears to be the gatekeeper behind everything that's happening on this train. Evening, lassie. How's old Gloria treating you so far? Gloria? The train, lass. Old girl just had a service. It's like lying on air, isn't it? It's... she's... kind of ancient, right? Hmm. <laughs> you could say that. Been running well over a hundred years, so she has. Of course, she's had every part replaced more than once. So she's not really the same train at all, then? Huh. You know, it feels like I've heard this conversation before, but in an intro to philosophy class that I took. She's got the same heart, though. Well, that settles that ancient debate. So down the philosopher and Alex chit-chat for a while. The essential bit here, though, is that one, the doctor is drunk in this cabin, and we shouldn't disturb him. Don's gonna check in on him. Thus ending our starter quest rather abruptly. But we do discover a little interesting tidbit about the doctor. You see, Alex is going to visit her friend Kat, who's working on the dig on the island that she's taking the train to. And it turns out the doctor she's working with is Dr. Boozington. What a small world. So now that we finally know why we're on this train, Dawn tells us to go talk to Floyd, because a man works for tips and really needs the business. At least, I'm assuming as much. Hello? Floyd? Anyone? I guess Abe charges by the line. Oh, look. Someone's left a Bloody Mary lying around. I shouldn't. Should I? Yeah, just chug down that unattended drink. I'm sure that nothing bad will come from it. Wait, there's a note beside it. Dear Alex, I thought you could use a drink. Steady your nerves. I'll be gone a while. Floyd. Oh, it has a note, so that makes it less creepy and reckless. Chug, chug, chug. Yeah, this is what happened to Dr. Boozington, and we all know what happened to him. So, yeah. Ain't we gonna be tripping balls? We all know that now, don't we? Oh, the door with a cultus in it. It's open now. Let's waltz in there and see... Oh, a little ballerina. That was unexpected. Uh, hi? Yeah, a grown-ass woman who smells of booze walking into a cabin occupied by a little girl. And this is a good look for you, Alex. Yep. I'm going to see my daddy. Your daddy live in Nipawamzet? What a silly name. No, he doesn't live there. Well, okay. Is that where your daddy lives? Actually, I... Actually, I lost my father. Tonight. Yay, we finally know why she was so sad in the first part of this trilogy. So Alex chit-chats with the little girl for a while. She seems so innocent. Surely nothing sinister will ever happen to her. It's not like this is a horror game or anything. But anywho, we're done talking to the girl. So we leave the cabin and then the game tells us what to do. Maybe I should go see Dawn. Okie dokie, back to Dawn. Evening, miss. Any sign of our doctor friend? Well, I tried to wake him, but it was out cold. Seemed unkind to shake him awake. Yeah, it sounds like Don's trying to start the cover-up. So Don gets all creepy now and talks a bunch about Alex's personal life. It's all kind of weird. But then something weird happens. Ah, balls. There we go. Into the tunnel. No idea why old Gloria craps out every damn time here. Hmm. I guess it has nothing to do with the game wanting to create some atmosphere now. Here, use this lighter. Good work, lass. Must have given my matches to that funny fella in 2B. He likes to play with fire, so he does. Well, that sounds astonishingly unsafe. It's alright. I told him to be on his best behaviour. It's not every day we have guests. This is a passenger train. Is it? Yep, 
Everything's getting trippy now. It must be the acid finally kicking in. But wait! There's more! Alex, hello. You came. They said you would. You promised you'd call. You never called. Why didn't you call, Alex? Rob, it's the middle of the night. Wait, what the fuck? Yeah, only just now she notices it's rather peculiar that Rob is on the train. How strong was that Bloody Mary? Oh, Alex, come on. I've always been there for you, haven't I? When Gavin left you, when your dad died, when you were getting those threatening phone calls. Oh, God. I forgot about that. Well, that's a new wrinkle that's suddenly been added to the plot. Turns out Alex is getting really creepy phone calls, and they occurred right after she broke up with Galvin, thus leaving her to believe that it's Galvin doing him to be a dick to her. Sounds like they had a toxic relationship. You're... you're right. Okay, fuck it. Pretty sure I've passed out and I'm dreaming this, but whatever. I'll run with it. Why do I need you right now? The Earth crawls, Alex. The sepulchre thunders towards its destination, like worms burrowing through the soil. That's a completely normal thing for someone to say. Yeah, I don't think anything's wrong with Rob at all. I'm sorry, I'm getting caught up in the moment. I should go back to my compartment. Come and find me there, when you're done with the girl. Yeah, let's listen to the creepy man who was talking about worms and stuff, who's on the train for no good reason other than maybe we're tripping balls. Yeah, let's just take his advice and talk to the girl. But first, let's go attend a party that's happening on the train, because things aren't quite weird enough yet. Hey. Hey, Alex. Hey, birthday girl. Where'd you get to? Uh, uh Sophia? Fuck, Jesus, Sophia, it is not my birthday. Why are you here? To freak your ass out, girl. Oh, great, Carly too. Fuck this, Gavin is not here. You're not here. None of this is here. None of this is real. I'm on a fucking train, for God's sake. Whoa, Alex, chill. Have you taken something? Isaiah, don't worry about it. Alex is just being your weird hysterical self. Well, sweetie, I hate to tell you this, but your voice recording sounds a little bit weird, too. Perhaps she's talking through a tin can. That wasn't a tin can. Anyway, it's Alex's birthday, but it's on the train, so obviously none of this is real. But this does serve a purpose. We get to learn about Alex's social life. She's friends with bitches, apparently. Yeah, it turns out the blonde girl, who talks like she's speaking through a tin can, she forced herself upon her man, well, Alex's man, Galvin, at her birthday party, which is happening, but not really happening right now. But anyway, you see, the blonde girl has been holding a flame for Galvin for, like, years, and they may have dated in the past, and honestly, this all seems like something out of a soap opera. Like sands through the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. It's been five years, and you're still not over Gavin. That's fucked, Carly. Move on! Open your eyes, Jesus Christ! Yeah, so now we're caught up in Alex's personal life, and we now know why she broke up with her boyfriend. It's because of that blonde bitch felt him up at her birthday party, and like a thousand soap operas that have come before. After Alex confronts her, I guess, tormentor? Rival? I don't know. She storms out of the party. Huh? The music stopped. Well, it looks like that trippy vision is done with. Huh? That sounds like my old ringtone. I think it's coming from the other carriage. Alex appears to be doing a fantastic job of just rolling with it. Well, let's go find that foam that shouldn't really be on this train, but is anyway. Ah, here we go. There's a phone stuck in the crack. This is my old cell phone. The one I got rid of a few weeks ago. And it's ringing. Withheld number. Oh. God, not again. Hello? Hello, little porcelain girl. Ah, I knew Floyd was evil. So yeah, this is the creepy caller that's been tormenting Alex that we just found out about five minutes ago. Yeah, he says a bunch of really creepy stuff, but Alex, I guess now emboldened by, I guess, confronting her rival at the party, finally has a thing or two to say to this guy. I am going to make you watch in the mirror as you choke on your own dick, and then I'll slice your fucking throat if you ever, ever call me again. Ever. I will find out who you are, and you will die. Well, 
Okay then. And here I was about to invite you over to my compartment. To party, you know? 1A. If you got the balls for it. God damn, everything's happened on this fucking magical mystery train. Well, guess where we're going? Rob? So, Alex doesn't think it's weird at all that Rob is in the room where the nuisance caller said he'd be in. In fact, she's like, oh, hey, friend, what you doing in here? Let's have a nice talk about my personal life. Just, you know, everything that's been going on with you. Gavin, your father, the stalker. I care about you a lot, Alex. I've told you about my daughter, right? Yeah. Yeah, you have. In short, Jim Sterling's daughter mysteriously disappeared. Nobody knows exactly what happened to her, but everyone pretty much by now presumes she's dead. And oh yeah, Alex looks a lot like her. I'm sure this won't lead to anything creepy at all. When I was in your apartment earlier and, and you were just lying there on the couch, it didn't look like you were breathing. I thought... I thought I'd lost you. No, I was... Wait. Wait, what? No! It's making me say things I don't want to say. What? What is? The worm! The worm inside my head, burrowing away inside my brain, wriggling like a grub. Yeah, shit's about to get really weird. I can't let them harm you. None of those filthy fucking men. Not Gavin, not Lang, not any of them. I know what they want from girls like you. You're my little porcelain doll. Alex. And with that said, Alex finally puts two and two together. Oh my god, the creepy dude who watches me sleep and has a very odd protectionist streak towards me was calling me and doing other fucked up stuff that we will get into later. I mean, Jim Sterling is living a very bad life here. So after all that's been revealed, Alex decides to get some tasty Marlboros in her lungs. Rob, I'm going to smoke, okay? I need to relax. Smoking will kill you, Alex. And then what follows is something straight out of a Blackwell game. Ah! Oh my fucking eye! I'm, I'm blind! You fucking... Ah! Rob, I feel for you. I really do. But nobody harasses me and gets away with it. Well, you go, girl. I'm sure that kick just added insult to injury. What were you doing in there, lass? And then what follows is a regurgitation of the plot. I, you understand this place better than most of us did when we first got here. I, I think I do. This is the sepulcher, right? Aye. Oh, Gloria. <laughs> the engine of death. Only... Only... Tonight we make our last stop. It's all thanks to you. You and Lang. I know, but I don't understand. Why us? Well, this is the big reveal, I suppose. Uh, we're aboard a terror train of freaky deakiness, and apparently our character knows that and is cool with it. She just wants to know why it's her and Lang who are like the chosen ones or something. But I, for one, just want to know what the hell's going on. I guess this is some supernatural train of emotional trauma being re-examined. So I guess in a way this train's therapy. And I guess maybe it's retiring after this last two sessions. Well, it is 100 years old, so it probably should hang it up by now. Ireland wants you, lassie. You and the Doctor. Us? We're just the staff. You two are the special ones. But you're setting us all free tonight. One way or another. Who is us? Me and, well, you'll see soon enough. You should go and check on your friends. I heard something of a ruckus down in carriage too. Oh, and Lassie. I'm sorry about all this. So Cthulhu Island wants us and we're not gonna turn around. We just accept our fate and go back to the party for some more soap opera action. In my opinion, she was all over him. Gavin tried to get rid of her. She wasn't having any of it. You walked in, you walked in at the worst time, right? Yes, I get it, game. Alex was rash. She walked in on her boyfriend being pretty much assaulted by his ex. And we, instead of trusting our partner, were like, fuck you, we're broken up now. I hate your guts. Yeah, I don't get this romance at all. And believe it or not, it is actually a good chunk of this game. Frankly, I don't give two shits about this lady's love life. I know she cares a lot about it, but I've never even seen Galvin. You kicked him right out. 
Well, that's about the gist of it right there. So now we gotta confront Blondie Mix Speaks through a tin can about what she did with our man. And since this is a horror game, naturally things are kind of fucked up and everyone just rolls with it. I am Judas. I am the betrayer. <laughs> Who in the blue fuck is that? Jesus, that's just Ben Chandler talking. Okay, so enough of this. I don't care anymore about her relationship. Let's end this puppy. So we give a lighter to Ben, and he gives us some money, which we in turn give to the blonde lady because she keeps asking for pieces of silver, like she's Judas. I get it. You read the Bible, lady. Silver. My silver. Gavin doesn't want me, Alex. He wanted you. He wanted you, and it kills me. You were the noose around my neck, Alex. You. Oh, so this is all symbolic. That's just great. So the lights go out, and I think you know what's going to happen. Well, you're no fucking use, are you? Hey, he did the art. Now that all that's been sorted, let's go back to the little girl and talk to her. And oh my god, it's Ron's daughter! Holy shit, she was on this train the whole time! And now we gotta give her a porcelain doll, because that convinces her to trust us. Are we changing history here or something? Oh wow! That's the doll I saw with Daddy! You really have met him! Yeah, do you want to go see him? Yeah, let me just... Hey, who's that? Lydia? Lydia? Well, she appears to be dead now. I guess this isn't Back to the Future after all. So on that note, I suppose we should go ahead and get a drink. Uh, hey, Floyd? Ah, uh, yes, Miss Davenport. So nice to see you again. Please take a seat. Cause guess what? Floyd's Gavin. Or something like that. I don't know, just roll with it. Oh god, Gavin. To see your face again. <laughs> How could you leave me like that? How could you do this to me? Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell me what an ass I was being? What that I could, sweetheart. What do you mean? It was uncharacteristic, wasn't it? I mean, we've had fights before, haven't we? Yeah, I just... You told me you were sick of it. Sick of me. You hurt me so fucking bad, Gavin. You reached into every single wound you know I have and poked the fuck around. All because I made a mistake? A mistake you could have so easily rectified? I would hold the hand of the one who could lead the places. Why are you here? Why are you on the train? How long have you been here? Since you came aboard. It's different for whoever rides old Gloria. There's always a Don, there's always a Floyd. But for you two, they were us. Well shit, that's just confusing as fuck. But hey, our man has some cool ass mutton chops. I bet he was in a band. This is bigger than us, Alex. We are all the children of Augur Peak. And we're all going home. You can thank Katerina when you see her. She's found something on that island, something that's changed the sepulcher forever. Anyway, he'll find out soon enough. Cat's story is a tale for another day. <laughs> Smell that? Smells like sequel bait to me. Call me, Alex. It'll explain everything better than I could. What the hell? Okay. Rob? Gavin? Explain. You'll never guess who I bumped into as I left your party that night. Oh, no. Oh, God, no. Oh, Alex. It was meant to be. It was so perfect. There he was, weeping in the hall, and there I was, the good neighbour, your friend, with a shoulder to cry on and a pot of coffee on the stove, so we could give you some time without going too far, so we could wait it out, make his triumphant return after your friends had left. Everything would have gone back to the way it was. He would have continued defiling you. And this is the point where I thought of the song that I've been using for the intro of these videos. Yeah. Oh, guys, it's getting good. But first, we gotta recant the story of what happened to Lydia to Ron because I guess the game's wanting to see if we're still paying attention. But hey, let's skip to the good stuff. I'm not your fucking daughter, Robert. Now tell me about Gavin. Well, I couldn't have that. That dirty boy putting his hands all over my beautiful porcelain doll. 
I couldn't have it. I'm a pharmacist, you know. I know how to do things to people, to drug them, to knock them out, to paralyze them. A few cuts here and there, a few threats, and I know how to make them say what I want them to. You should have, oh, you should have seen the look on his face as he made those phone calls to you, as I pressed the knife to his balls and whispered, keep going. And you should see him now, four months and still alive. I had to remove his other leg last weekend. No good now. Not with the gangrene. Amazed you've never noticed the smell. It's incredible how compliant someone is when they know the person they love is just across the hall. Incredible how easy it is to keep someone alive while locked in a tiny, tiny room. And... And he wasn't dirty anymore. I cleaned him up. I did. Made him a porcelain doll. Just like you. A frozen porcelain doll. It's three doctors. Kevin? This isn't true, is it? This is just one of the sepulchre's fucked up fantasies. It's true. I'm there. I'm alive. Of course, so is Robert. At least for the time being. It's probably about time a neighbor noticed the smell and called the cops. Would you like that, eh, Robert? No, I like you better with your tongue cut out, Gavin. Well, that explains why the phone calls stopped, Alex. Well, there's not much left to take. He's just a head on a torso now. Oh, it's beautiful, Alex. He is the perfect man. Oh, well, shit. That was not a twist that I saw coming. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty good. Shit. And guess who else joins the party now? Anyways... Don't let old Don get in the middle of your dramatic revelation, kids. Don't mind me. I'm just taking the weight off my feet. Pretend like I'm not here. So now what? You have to end this. There's gonna be a fight tonight! Lloyd. Donald? I don't reckon that's how it was meant to go. Do you? Can't say I do, no. This one. He's reaching through, isn't he? Looks that way. Oh, Logger's not going to be happy about this. I guess that's just the way it goes sometimes. Can't interfere. Cassell? No. Don't! So the game's not done with you quite yet. You need to tidy up the ending a little bit. I'm sorry. I don't want to be alone right now. You can't hear me anyway. I wasn't... I wasn't prepared. Not for this. I thought I'd see him. Keith. My father. Instead I found... this. I don't know what was real. Rob, Gavin, Carly, Lydia, and you... Dr. Harold Lang. I bet you thought you weren't going to make it here tonight. Like I did. I don't think either of us made it here tonight. The train's stopping. I hope you wake up, Dr. Lang. I hope we both wake up. There's a fog rolling in. I can barely see the town. Well, that's gonna make today's work even more fun. God damn. Still, Harry and Alex should be here later today. I hope they had a safe journey. What's up with birds being murdered in this game? Oh well, that's the ending, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between. We are done with the Channel House Trilogy. It's ended right here. Look, there's credits and everything. 
So, what are my thoughts about this game? Well, for starters, it's really not much of a game. I wouldn't call it a walk-in simulator, but honestly, as an adventure game, there's barely any puzzles to be had here. And also, I probably could have done without all the nitty-gritty details of Galvin and Alex's relationship. Felt like that was a bit long-winded, to be honest with you. Because frankly, I don't give a shit about these characters' personal lives. Hell, I barely care about my own. But other than that, I think the game's pretty damn good. It's very atmospheric, and the art style is fitting. And also, the voice acting is pretty decent. Although, yeah, there's some parts of it that are just really choppy and just kind of stand out. I mean, Tin Can Blonde Lady couldn't have gone to the recording studio. But oh, well, I guess she wasn't really that important of a character, although kind of she was. Never mind. But I gotta say, this game reminds me a lot of a freakier episode of, say, The Outer Limits or The Twilight Zone. It's strange, it's Lovecraftian, and it's got me thinking about what the hell is going to happen next. So yeah, I am rather eagerly anticipating the sequel to this game, because I feel like it has a nice setup. I'm interested in this weird Augur Peak thing, and these Lovecraftian horrors, and the cultists that actually turn out to be a pretty good dude because he killed Ron for us. So, enjoyable enough game? I do recommend it. It is not expensive, and it's worth your time. Hell, it took me only about three hours to beat this game, and I was lollygagging for a good chunk of it. So with that said, ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between, have a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening. I'll see you next time. Hopefully.